Well, welcome back to another video. Um, we're actually in a different hangar today. Uh, thanks to Greg Oliver and his flight club, uh, we're doing an annual on one of his Piper, the Archer. This channel is about working on aircraft and flying those airplanes. So come take a seat and let's go for a flight. <laughs> So what is involved with an annual? Um, basically the regulations state that there is a list of items that need to be looked at on an annual basis to make sure that the aircraft is safe to fly. And uh, we won't get into too big of a, I'll have some graphics or something to uh, put in there. Um, but basically you want to get access to all of the entire airplane, which means taking off uh, uh, access panels. Uh, we've removed the cowling over here. And maybe some of the interior needs to be um, taken apart just to uh, look inside and uh, look at some of the structure. So later in the week, this airplane is actually going to go through an inspection to look at the attachments of the wings to the fuselage. Uh, recently, there was a high-profile accident um, where the wing actually separated from the airplane in flight, which isn't really good. So. Um, based on a lot of different factors of uh, the age of the aircraft, how it's flown, if it was flown in a um, flight club or how it was operated, and how many inspections it's actually had uh, will be a determining factor of that uh, inspection. So this airplane, although it doesn't really apply, um, the owner and operator, which is Greg and their flight club, the Los Caballeros, um, they, uh, they elected to do the inspection anyway, which is, you know, keeping your wings on your airplane, kind of a good thing. So we're going to go through all that. We're going to show you some of the uh, uh, things we're going to do for uh, how, how we do the inspection. And one of the most important things is uh, for your mechanic, who is, should be the <laughs> an IA if you're actually doing an actual annual, uh, there's a thing with, uh, it's called a 100-hour inspection, and some airplanes... They're in, um, like in, in flight schools and stuff. They have to go through a 100-hour inspection. And the 100-hour inspection and the annual actually are the same criteria, and you look at everything the same way. Um, but how you take credit for a 100-hour and an annual is based upon how you operate your airplane. But the scope and detail is the same. So this is going to be an annual, and the mechanic is responsible for doing all the inspection, um, also doing a research for any directives that are applicable to the airplane, uh, either initial or recurrent uh, inspections. So uh, I, for myself, um, I subscribe to a service that does all that research for me. I just have to plug in the aircraft type, uh, serial number, and it prints out a list of all the applicable ADs. So we've already done that process. Um, you also, as the, the mechanic wants to go through and make sure they look at the logs and see the history of the airplane. Get familiar with the ins and outs of your particular aircraft. So um, we're gonna start off with uh, just doing a general uh, visual inspection. Um, later on, we're gonna get into uh, checking the uh, compression on the engine and we'll show you how we do a compression test and uh, we'll just show you some uh, unique things about uh, uh, the Piper PA 28 so stick around sorry for the poor camera angle and the lighting uh, started to rain so we had rain in Seattle what uh, so we had to close the hangar doors um, but this is a good example of when to use a speed handle. When you got a panel with a lot of screws, you could be spending a lot of time doing these by hand, which you should be doing by hand because of the drill motors, they tend to, if they slip, they slip really quickly and they destroy your screws. So with speed handles, you get the almost the same effective speed as you would with a screw gun or an electric powered drill. 
basically you do less damage because you can get some downforce by pushing on the end of the handle and you're getting more leverage um, like you do with a ratchet. So, as you can see, it doesn't take very long to get some of these screws out or put them back in. So here's an example of what we call an attach point. This is the vertical stabilizer and uh, we gain access through this panel and we can go in here and look at uh, like uh, for example we have some wiring for the light and for the VOR antenna um, additionally there is the um, well, the attachment stuff that's up here um, there's right up here in the front is the front attach front spar there's a fitting that runs, or a member that runs along this way and attaches down here and we just want to get a good look inside here um, on both sides and see as far as we can um, going up that way. Interesting thing about some of the Pipers, uh, the Cessna 177, um, is that the entire surface of the stabilizer is the elevator. So we call them a stabilator. And you'll notice that the, the tab, which runs a good length on the back side of this surface here, it actually goes in opposition of the stabilizer. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to push the elevator or stabilator into fare itself to the stabilator. So when you have this much elevator up, so when you pull back on the control column, you'll see that this tab is in opposition to that elevator. Now, if we roll the trim down, so hopefully you can see that move. Now it's not up as much. So when the stabilator wants to go down, that's where the stabilator is trimmed at. So that's pretty nose up. If you look at the, the line, this line right here, as opposed to where this paint mark is at, this is about the, the thrust line. So that's probably just looking at the, so this would be neutral. So you can tell that the, right now the stabilator is kind of pointing down which is going to force the tail down, causing the nose to rise. So the control column is pulled back. And you can see, you can see our control column is pretty much all the way back. Not quite, but. So somewhere about in here, I would say, right about there should be right about neutral. So that's, this is more of a neutral position, and you can see the tab is actually a little bit lower. So if we ran that trim back to, I would say, like the takeoff position. So now, the elevator is pretty much fair true, so we call that neutral. So another really kind of cool uh, professional tip 
when you have your panels that are going back on, you should start your all your fasteners by hand and put them all in before you start tightening them up. The reason for that is if you look at some of these holes, the hole for the panel is usually a lot larger than the hole for the nut plate or the size fastener that you're putting in. So that allows for a little bit of variance and movement in the panel. So by putting these in completely before you start tightening them up, you'll find that if you start tightening them up, by the time you've gone around, the panel hasn't shifted to its proper position and you're going to end up not being able to get those last few holes in. So put them all in by hand, make sure they're all in and started before you start tightening them down. Now we've got uh, all the fasteners in. You can tell they're loose because you can hear them rattling around. So we'll go through and uh, take the speed handle to them and tighten them all up. Now for the other side. Hey man, you done over there? Right. Nice having an extra set of hands. So we just, um, the, the major part of the inspection is done with um, uh, looking at uh, major components like the wing attachments, um, anything with, uh, like we said, uh, fuel lines, uh, flight control cables, um, and you know, quite honestly, this is a very clean airplane for actually being. Uh, this is our first time on the annual um, with this one, and uh, um, so far things are going pretty good. So, but the the probably the time consuming and the um, I guess the pain of the ass of this one is <laughs> this is a long wing airplane, and uh, um, getting into each one of these access holes, we use. Um, a mirror and a flashlight and we just go in and carefully look at everything that's in each one of these bays um, to make sure that nothing's chafing, cables are running um, where they're supposed to be running. Um, we're also looking at the structure for any cracks or um, any corrosion. Um, and, uh, um, and just general condition. So. Um, and then so if you do like a pre-flight, um, you're looking at a lot of the stuff we're looking at. Um, this is also, this is a lot more detailed than what uh, we, what we would be looking for um, on a pre-flight. Um, but it's basically the same things. Um, we're just looking for any kind of defects. Um, in each one of these areas um, and it just it just takes a little bit of time to look in here and and try and find this stuff so that's uh, pretty much what the actual inspection is so what I mean by spar is there's uh, most airplanes will have a, uh, a two spar which is basically like a large I-beam, and right. that's what we're going to be doing inspections on yeah, the eddy with current. those bolts with the eddy current, is that's the attachment point for the wing. Mm -hmm. And so with that I-beam, so if you imagine if you're looking this direction, why we call it an I-beam, is it looks like a capital I. So it'll have a top flange, a bottom flange, and then a web in between. So this fastener row right here, is on the bottom flange, but it's on the front side of that I, of, of that web, and it's that's just not going to be fun to get to. Um, well, you're you're saying we have to get to it from the back side, but there's no no, way no to I'm just saying it. there's okay. no I'm just saying it'd be a lot of easier if we could actually oh, just get to it and, and turn it maybe with a pair yeah, of pliers or, or something. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, not 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 being able to see it from the instant, you know, from where I'm at. Yeah, it's just kind of like a maze. If you look inside here, 
Um, I'll I'll see if I can't get one of my. What I'll do is I'll. I'll take it. <laughs> it's everywhere. Well, you know, if you don't know where to look, you're right. you know, if you don't know where to look, you're not going to find it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and 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 from my experience, I've I've been in that position where yeah. the 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 best thing is like a lot of people a lot of people say like how'd you find that? Well, what I've learned over the years is that just looking at something head on and just kind of it, but if you turn your head or change the angle and move in a different direction, you're going to see something that you never saw before. Right. Right. So yeah. and that's so I'm always constantly yeah. moving my head around and and you know looking yeah. at it from this way and looking at it from from a different angle and you'll it's surprising yeah. how easily you find stuff. Yeah. Put your put your mind and you have to think like the enemy. If I were a piece of fod, where would I go? Yeah. Where would I hide? Yeah, where would I, where would I? <laughs> what, what kind of camouflage would I be wearing? <laughs> I get my work out. Also, the harder the area is to look at, probably the more defects you're going to find. Just saying. So we're going to wrap up day one of the Archer Annual. Uh, like I said, all the records have been reviewed and any applicable directives have been looked at um, that needed to be. Um, the entire aircraft has been uh, looked at um, except for the engine tomorrow or uh, the following uh, subsequent day. We will, we will do a compression test. Um, we did find uh, some things like the uh, the mufflers are going to have to be replaced, and we've got some other um, little issues, uh, nothing major that we're going to take care of. So um, we'll continue with day two later this week, and uh, we'll do the compression test, and um, hopefully we'll uh, get this thing all wrapped up. Uh, we're also going to be doing the eddy current inspection for the wing spar. So uh, that'll be kind of cool and informative for people. So uh, stick around. Uh, day two coming up. Now I'm not some rich and famous YouTuber asking you to like and subscribe to this channel. I'm an aviator asking you to like and subscribe to this channel because that's the way YouTube works. If you don't click those buttons, YouTube doesn't know that you want to see more aviation content and won't show you more. But if you don't like what you've seen, please leave me a nasty comment down below, because that's the way the internet works. May all your flying be good flying. <laughs>